College Football 25 has tons of new plays and defensive concepts that we've never seen in a football game before, as well as a brand new coverage shell system that allows you to disguise every defense in the game. So if you guys want to see how to read and beat every single defense in College Football 25, stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the College Football 25 G's. In today's video, I'm going to go over how to read and beat every single defense in the game, including the new coverage shell system, which really makes every defense look however you want them to look. So I'm going to go over the importance of reading the uh, defense pre-snap and post-snap. I'm going to show you guys how to read it before and after the snap. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about as far as the shell system is concerned. If I pick cover zero here, which is going to be the Overstorm Brave, then the offensive side, if I just pick a random play, you can see we have an obvious cover zero look across the board where everybody's just manned up uh, except for the blitzers. And if I choose cover zero on the uh, shell system and choose a different defense like cover three, it's going to look the exact same way. So this is going to make it really important to make pre-snap and post-snap reads this year because there really is no tell when it comes to the new coverage system. After that, I also want to go over some variables uh, because I'm going to tell you guys certain things to look for that will give away a defense. But based off of certain variables like where you are on the field and what the offensive formation is, that can change. So I'll go ahead and I'll choose cover three once again. I want to show you guys what it looks like if you're facing something where it's kind of like a spread look. Uh, like right here, we'll just choose something out of the random, uh, out of the normal Y off week. And you'll see that the cornerbacks will be backed off, giving you a cover three look. Like I said, I'm not going to go over specifics right now. I just want to go over some of the differences. But you can see the cornerbacks are backed off. That's traditional of a cover three, cover four, things like that. But once again, that can change based off of the offensive play. So I'm going to start off by showing you guys how to read a defense if your opponent's not using the cover shell system. And then I'll show you guys how to read a defense if they are using the cover shell system. So before I do that, I do want to first point out that there are several variables that can change how a defense reacts uh, based off of where a, a the, the offense is on the field and also based off of the offensive formation. So if I choose a cover three which I'll pick first, and then I'll pick something that's kind of like a spread formation, like the wide trips here. If I choose this defense here, you're gonna get your traditional cover three look, which is the cornerbacks are about eight yards off. I'll go over that more in a minute. Uh, but I just wanted to show how against this offensive package, you're gonna see how the cornerbacks are more backed off. But if I pick a different offensive package where it's not as spread, where they don't have uh, receivers out wide, something like the, the wing slot week here, where you really only have two tight ends on one side and two receivers on the other side, you're going to see the defense is going to react very differently pre-snap. As you can see, the cornerback on the left side, where the receivers are, is still eight yards back, but the one in front of the tight ends is much closer. And that's because they're programmed to not really respect the speed of tight ends. I mean, there's not typically, you know, there's 99 speed receivers in the game, but there's no tight ends that, fa that fast. So they'll typically uh, be down the box like this. And I wanted to point that out to start the video because when I start showing you guys uh, like split coverage defenses, like cover six and cover nine, I'm going to be talking about how one of the cornerbacks is going to be playing down closer to the line of scrimmage than the other. So I don't want you to be confused by that based off of the fact that there are scenarios where certain offensive packages can have that effect. There's also scenarios where where you are on the field can change where the cornerbacks line up, like things like uh, inside the deep red zone, inside the 10 yard line. You'll start to notice that no matter what defense you're in, that the cornerbacks will be playing down much further because there is no uh, deep coverage here. There's only about you know 15 to 20 yards of space on the field with the end zone. So, and that'll get even worse if you get closer to the uh, to the goal line. If you get inside the five, no matter what defense you see, you're, they're pretty much going to be pressed right up on top of the receivers because there really isn't a lot of space. So now I'm going to start off by showing you guys all the different zone coverage defenses and show you guys what to look for. But before I do, if you guys like these type of videos, these type of tip videos, you want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. And if you need more help and more money plays, you can always check out any of my eBooks. Links in the description or the top pinned comment. So I'm starting off with cover two, and that's because this probably has the most distinctive look. You can see that the cornerbacks in cover two are typically about five yards off the line of scrimmage, which is no other defense really does that. So that's the easiest way to tell cover two. And pretty much every defense is going to be looking at the outside cornerbacks first and the depth that they start at. Now you can also see on cover two, the safeties are way further apart than you're going to see in something like a cover four. And that's because they have more responsibility. They have larger areas they have to cover. 
So, cover five, or I'm sorry, cover two, five yards off the line of scrimmage. Uh, cover three next is going to typically be eight yards off the line of scrimmage, which, like I said, that's going to be cover three, cover four, both cover four drop and cover four match are going to look the exact same way. So if you see eight yards off the line of scrimmage, the next thing you're going to want to look at is going to be the safeties, which in a cover three, you have that single high safety, a very distinct look. After that, we have cover four palms, which typically will have the eight yards off the line of scrimmage look once again. But for some reason against this offensive look, like I said, you're going to see different changes from time to time. For some reason, there's uh, the cornerbacks dropping down. So I'll go ahead and I'll back him off manually. And you'll see how this is going to be your typical cover for look. We have the cornerbacks both eight yards off the line of scrimmage, making you look at these safeties once again. And in this play, you can see the safeties, number one, they're a lot closer together than cover two because they don't have as large of a responsibility. They don't have to cover outside. They really have to just cover their quarter area in the middle. But you could also see that they're also split. You got one safety that's about 14 yards, and the other safety is about 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. So that's going to be a very distinctive look when it comes to um, cover four is the safety split depth because that's not traditional of other defenses. Now, when you get to something like uh, cover six or uh, cover nine, you can see how the split field, um, the safeties are somewhat distinct, but in all reality, it's back to the cornerbacks once again. If you just look at the cornerback depths, you can see that on the quarter flat side, the cornerback's eight yards off the line of scrimmage once again. And on the cover two side, he's five yards off the line of scrimmage once again. So if you ever come out and you see cornerbacks at different depths, you know right away that it's a split defense. So that's how to read zones. Now we're going to go over how to read man coverages. For cover zero, the easiest way to tell is, number one, the safeties. This is the only defense where the safeties will be within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage every single time because they have man assignments. You can also tell by the alignment. They're typically going to be uh, aligned right in front of their receivers to not give up inside or outside leverage. So anytime you see the safeties this low, you know it's a cover zero. Uh, when it comes to cover one, you'll notice that, once again, they're still aligned the same way. Um, they can be a little bit like the, the, the guy aligned over the, um, the tight end is a little bit further outside. But you can see that we have that single high safety look. And if I were to switch over to a cover three, say, you're going to notice that the outside cornerbacks won't be aligned in front of the receivers as much anymore. A lot of times they'll be aligned outside. Um, although this particular look, because they're spread so much, you don't necessarily get that. But that's one distinctive tell is the fact that they're aligned right in front of the right in front of the cornerbacks not giving up any outside leverage so let's go ahead and let's continue with uh cover two man this is another distinct look where this is the only defense where the cornerbacks are playing right in front of the receiver's face because they're going to be uh, pressing off the line so they have to be down on the receivers because this is a very physical man heavy jamming uh defense so they have to be right in front they're not playing off man here they're playing very tight press man so this is going to be your three looks when it comes to uh man coverage let's go ahead and let's back out and let's show you how to beat these defenses so i had to switch over to the offensive side of the ball i'm going to do the majority of this part out of a trips look because trips are one of the wider concepts there's a ton of trips formations just about every single playbook so this will be the easiest way uh, for people that are watching this video to translate to their own offensive playbook i'm in the georgia playbook because this is my favorite and i will eventually be putting out an offensive georgia ebook if you guys want to check that out it should be out in a couple days but for now i'm just going to go i'm going to pick the return post curl and then i'm going to start off with cover two we'll continue out of the nickel because i just want kind of a vanilla coverage and we'll go with the tampa two on defense now to beat cover two the easiest way to do that is to the outside if i choose something with a corner route like the pa flood you can see that this has everything you need it has a short route to pull the cornerback down and the bubble screen it also has a streak to pull back the safety but it's kind of in reverse it's better to have the inside receiver pulling back uh, the safety because he's also going to pull him to the inside and the outside receiver closer to the cornerback on something short to pull the cornerback down like a smoke route. So the only thing I really got to worry about, I think this route's a little bit too short. Uh, you'll have to worry about like zone drop depths, but if I move that, um, that corner route back just a little bit, you'll see how easily it can get open to the outside and potentially get up the field if you can get around the safety. So that's one concept. Now, cover twos are also vulnerable over the middle, but not in the way that they were in the past. In the past, you could just put the B receiver on a streak. It would pull back the safety, and then you could throw over the middle to the Y receiver. But you can see how the vert hooks match. Uh, you also have uh, the mid read this year, which is very good. I'll go ahead and extend that route a little bit, and we'll do the same concept to show you that even if the vert hooks don't take over, the mid read typically will. I mean, there was a small window there, but you can see typically the mid read is going to take that away. So if you really want to create space over the middle, now the best way to do that 
is with a double post concept. So I'm gonna put the B receiver on a post. And once again, I'm gonna extend Y because I don't, I don't, you don't want them at the same depth or they're gonna to be too close. And then this is gonna be all you really need to do to split those safeties now because the, the mid read's gonna match the first post route that it sees, which is the B receiver. If I really wanna create space, put X on a streak once again to pull that safety back outside. And you're gonna see how easily this can split those safeties now for a big play uh, to potential catch and run one play touchdown. For off zone coverages like cover three and cover four, you can use that exact same flood concept and you don't have to make any adjustments. That's because this particular play, the outside cornerback's dropping back, so you want the, the streak to pull him back. So this is perfect. You don't have to make any adjustments. I do think that you probably want to extend this corner route one more time uh, just to get it a little bit easier over the top of the flat. But you can see, once again, you can have a very easy play against that, and that works against cover three or cover four. Another easy way to beat cover threes is underneath the dropping cornerbacks. I would probably want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field if I'm going to run something like this. But you can always put this receiver on out routes, a 10 yard out route. We'll do a really good job of beating this cornerback outside um, once the play starts. As you can see right here, there's space outside the dropping cornerbacks. One vulnerability that cover three shares that cover four does not is up the seam. So if you want to put, uh, say, both the B and X receiver on streak routes, you'll notice that the safety has to rotate over to the middle and it gives you an opportunity to throw the ball up the seam. Now, when it comes to defenses that are uh, split defenses, like a cover six or a cover nine, you really just want to use the same cover two concept, just find which side is the cover two side. You can see here on the left side, the cornerback's five yards of the line of scrimmage, and then on the other side is eight yards off. So I know the left side is the cover two side. So I can go right back to my cover two concepts and it'll work the exact same way uh, just, you know, I'm just basically splitting the field in half and you can see how now we can do the exact same thing It's still a cover two on the side. So it still has the same vulnerabilities now when it comes to cover four match one of the easiest ways to beat this defense is by having um, Five receivers on the field. So any empty backfield look you can create an empty backfield by motioning out a running back But you'll notice that there's four deep zones and I now have five receivers So if I have all five receivers going over ten yards, which can, I can simply do just by putting the tight end here on a slant You'll notice that um, You know, there's not gonna be enough deep coverage and one of these guys is gonna be left alone Which on this play is gonna be the B receiver as you can see he's just wide open there once he crosses Crossing routes are very effective too when it comes to cover four But the most important part is having five receivers now the way that, that play turned out I could tell that if I just isolate this cornerback by putting the the uh, the running back here on a uh, comeback route which once again is over 10 yards every time you uh, run this you have to have all the routes going over 10 yards because that's when the deep cornerback or the deep safeties will react but a route over 10 yards if i put him on a comeback route you'll notice that the b receiver here now has no competition once he crosses the field and we get another very easy one play touchdown against this defense things like drags slants uh post routes corner routes there's so many things that can beat man coverage um, you know, I would say even on the outside, you want to put a guy on a speed out route or a 10 yard out route or a comeback route like I have here. You can just time that throw and you can still come back routes all game. Like I said, that's going to be weak outside to, uh, to 10 yard out routes. There's so many different things that could work because at the end of the day, it's all about timing and leverage when it comes to beating man. Like the biggest leverage play that I have here is probably to the B tight end because his defender is so far outside that if I put him on a simple drag, he's gonna get wide open every single time, just based off of leverage. He's got five yards of inside leverage. So that's one way to, to, to do it. Corner routes are also very good. We can go to that flood concept one more time and you'll see how, um, you know, that corner route there, once he gets outside leverage on the cornerback, which he kind of starts to play with, you can see how he can beat that cornerback to the sideline every single time. You just want to run into the open side of the field because you're going to need space when it comes to uh, routes that beat man. So now I have a cover zero shell, and all I have to do uh, to tell what this play is post snap is look at the safety. If it's a man coverage, you can tell because the defenders will follow. It's not hard to tell the difference between man and zone. Zone, they go to a spot. Man, they cover the receiver. That part's really easy. But if you want to know what type of man or zone it is, you just watch the safeties. If it's cover two, the safeties will drop back away from one another. They'll basically drop to the outside. And if it's a cover four, they'll drop them back more towards the middle. If it's a cover three, one of the safeties will drop down and one of the safeties will drop back, making it pretty easy to read. You can see right here, that safety outside here really ran to the outside. Like he really ran like he had to cover the majority of the field because I'm running this from a hash mark to the open side of the field. Against cover four, like I said, you watch those safeties this time. 
and they're going to drop more straight to the back. They're not going to be worried as much to the outside as I can still hit that corner route, although realistically I probably should have hit that flat route. If you watched last time in the cover too, this guy dropped way to the outside because he has to cover the large side of the field where here he just pretty much just drops back. So that's going to be the easiest way to tell is all four outside deep quarters are all just dropping back to not land and get over the top of them. And the last but not least, we got cover three. You don't want to stare at the safeties, but if you watch them for half a second and one of them drops down, you know what you have and you can take your uh, take your look underneath. I'll go ahead and I'll go to the replay just to show you guys what that looks like. Like I said, this is your covers, cover three look where you know the safety is not interested in necessarily dropping back. He jumps right down the line and jumps outside. So if you see that where one safety is more hesitant or more active in the box and the other safety is just running straight back because he's just trying to make sure nothing gets behind him, you know you have a cover three. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more tips videos like this, I'll have them popping up on the screen now. Just click links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. I'm going to shut out.